By introducing such tension, the objectification of the body, occurring with mere self-recognition, would introduce a negation of the purity of one's subjectivity, a negation of its absolute. In reaction against such narcissistic the child recognizing herself in the mirror would assume the honor of the nominating identity which to be marked with its rigid stricture, the subject's entire mental identification. The identification of the mere image would only lead a subject to experience the tension between, on the one hand, the image of oneself as object experienced as taken and fulfilling, and on the other hand, the experience of oneself as subject as not being an object. Uh, that the subject is not an object of empathy is not enough to elect. Objecthood is not what we need to become in order to be oneself. Moreover, uh, it is not an idea to be fulfilled. Being oneself has to be the goals of the subject, and this subjecthood is irreducible. Being oneself irreducibly involves not being an object. This characterization of um, contrasts interestingly with the one I defended by Salt, only from the following approach. According to Salt, the subject is determined as a lack of being, and rather than a deduction between different irreducible dimensions of oneself, Salt is characterized as an original connection, a balance between the subject and what he wants. In this way, the subject is an incomplete being, surpassing itself toward an object of which it lacks. Nonetheless, for the this is an impossible synthesis. The society cannot be given by nature, since so it combines in itself the incompatible characteristic of the of objective and subjective. The subject is going to start this step separately because it is going to be unrighted by a totality of coincidence with himself, which remains enriched precisely because it will not attain a object without losing
but the body sometimes, I, sometimes I learned that we don't get the change. The body is no more than a costume.